guys, Jeannie here and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. So today I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little sit down chit chat video um, with you guys and share with you guys something that has been very significant in my life for the past 30 days. So I know we have all been in the same boat the last month, month and a half with everything that's been going on right now. Our lives literally have been turned upside down. Our schedules as we knew it are completely out of whack. Kids are home, um, people are you know, losing their jobs, you know, you're scared to leave your house, you haven't seen your immediate family in what feels like years. I am with you guys here and everything has just been changing. And for me, I am a huge control freak to where I want to know what's happening every day to the next day to the next week. I like to know what's going on. I like to be in control. And it was just very, I guess, coincidental that my stumbles with my diet also came during this pandemic. And the Bible tells us in Matthew 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. So I found myself in the midst of the first few weeks of this pandemic and I was stress eating. I was literally eating everything out of sight. I even had a relapse with my um, binge and purge recovery and it was at the midst of being so knee deep that I knew I needed help. So what I decided to do is reach out. I reached out to one of my best friends and she is a keto warrior. That's what I'm going to call her. And I knew I needed to reach out. I knew I needed help. I knew I needed to recommit myself. So for the past 30 days, I have been under the coaching of the Nicole Burgess. So she has been coaching me along um, through keto for the past 30 days. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and insert a little video clip for you guys, um, for you guys to see what she has planned and what she's currently working up for the summer. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert that right here. Hey everyone, I just wanted to personally come on here and wish Gina the biggest of congratulations. She has been so dedicated, so focused, so motivated, and I could not have been more thrilled with the progress that I'm seeing. She is sticking to plan. She is doing amazing, and I am just so, so proud of her. 14 pounds is an incredible accomplishment that she has reached in the short amount of time, and she's just gonna keep on crushing it. You guys can do the same thing, so I hope that she is motivating and inspiring you guys to get off your butt and do the same thing. It's never too late to make a change in your life, and she is proof of that. And y'all, I am getting my official certification to be a keto coach. The cat is out of the bag. I'm so excited. Now that we have this free time, I'm using it to my advantage and using it in a positive light and I will be taking clients this summer so if you want to go ahead and get on the waiting list go ahead and email me in the description box I'm sure Gina left it there and I will put you on the waiting list for when I'm officially certified but thank you so much to Gina for letting me have her as my guinea pig in the beginning and so far it is working so Gina I love you girl and you are doing amazing I couldn't be more proud of you keep killing it keep inspiring so as the video shared, Nicole is taking clients for keto coaching. I'm gonna go ahead and share with you guys how I've been feeling this past month being back on keto. So I started this journey on March 15th and I wasn't really exercising regularly. I was eating basically whatever I wanted until wee hours of the night around the clock eating, snack eating, stress eating, you name it, I was eating it. And I had gotten myself up to the scale at 184 pounds. And that was the weight I started at when I had just given birth to Tanner. Like that's usually like the heaviest I get after I have babies. And for me, that was so disappointing because I was on a good ride like a month or two before that. I was doing really good and then all the stress of the pandemic hit and everything went out the window. So I was back at square one. So for the past 30 days, I am now down to 170 pounds. So I have lost a whopping 14 pounds in one month's time. Now I know that a lot of this is probably water weight, but I am not going to cancel the fact that 14 pounds is a huge accomplishment for one month. So. I know the months leading in, um, I know the months 
following this are going to be, you know, less significant. I know the first month of any type of like major like lifestyle change in your diet, you're going to have big numbers. And then the following months are going to be a little bit less as we get on. So my goal, my goal weight in all of this has always been to reach around the 155 range. So that is my number. So I'm looking to lose about another 15 pounds, something like that. But the most important thing of this journey is for me to get a control of my food addiction. I have a food addiction. I have an eating addiction. I overeat. I eat too much. I eat when I am, I'm not even hungry. I eat because I'm upset. I eat because I'm stressed out. I eat because I have anxiety. Aside from, you know, a binge and purge problem, I feel like the most significant problem is the stress eating, the emotional eating. Because if it wasn't for the stress eating and the emotional eating, then I would be, uh, I wouldn't have those feelings of like binging and purging. So I feel like now where I'm at in my recovery, I've already relapsed. So I'm going to have to start from, you know, taking a new token. I have to take a recommitment token next time I'm able to go to celebrate recovery. Um, but I feel like the number one thing that I need to be focusing on in my recovery at this point is emotional eating. So we're going to mark today as my first day of my recommitment to binge and purge, but also my recommitment to emotional eating. I want these both to be in the same category. So we are back on day one. Today is what, April 20th? Oh, wow, 420. What a great day to make a, <laughs> a life change on 420. <laughs> Anyways, whole nother story time there. <laughs> um, but today is going to mark the first day of getting myself back mentally because even though I have been, you know, even though I've been on the keto plan, I have found myself eating a little bit more of the keto treats, eating a little bit more cheese, eating a little bit more and passing my daily macro. That's something I wanna definitely um, work on is mentally my stress eating, mentally my emotional eating. So we are starting on day one in recovery again. So I think what I'm gonna do, cause I already have my recommitment chips right here. So I think what I'm gonna do is just start my chips right now. So my journey re-begins right now on April 20th. So then I will just go ahead and start giving myself my chips back while we are in quarantine. So I think that's what we're going to do. So I have recommitted myself with my journey begins chip. Now, if you guys hear my kids in the background, sorry, quarantine life. So what I want to talk to you guys about is what I've been doing the past 30 days. So Nicole, she has sent me a meal plan every Sunday and the meal plans list my breakfast, my lunch, my dinner. She also gives me options for snacks. She gives me options for dessert. So Nicole plans out my meals beautifully. So I tell her what meats I like, what meats I don't like, things I absolutely will not eat. So for me, I hate mayonnaise, so I won't eat anything with mayonnaise. I'm not a fan of chicken. Um, and I'm also not a seafood eater. So she has made a lot of my meal plans um, geared towards um, ground beef, which I absolutely love. So just to give you guys a glimpse of some of the meal plans. So for breakfast, it's really easy. I do eggs and a half of avocado um, with another like meat source. So like a, a bacon or a sausage. Um, and then I do my coffee with heavy whipping cream. And then for lunch, I'll do something easy like a hamburger in a bowl or I'll do a pizza in a mug. That's been one of my favorite d meals thus far is the pizza in a mug. Um, also for dinners, I've been doing casseroles. I've been doing um, my favorite meal that I've had so far is the keto enchiladas. And what I love is that she's been making one main meat source for me. And then she caters all these different recipes around that one meat source. So all I need to do is buy a huge chunk of meat at the beginning of the week. And then it's divvied up with my different meal plans. So she kind of takes the the job of me figuring out, okay, what am I going to make for dinner? I'm never left idle wondering, okay, what am I going to have for dinner? Because I have it in my email. It's right there. It says, okay, today is the broccoli and cheese casserole. That's what I'm currently making tonight for dinner. I already made it. I actually meal prepped this week, which is exciting. I have a video coming out this week with um, Jen, a new friend that I've made through Instagram and YouTube. So look out for that this Thursday. 
Um, but I did meal prep that, so it's in my fridge ready to go, so I don't even have to think about it. Today, I will head to the store to get a few things that I need for tomorrow's meal. So she takes the brain work out of me having to figure out like what I'm going to eat for dinner. So I absolutely love that. And it gives me one last thing to have to, to think about. So, um, so I definitely want to share with you guys some of my favorites that I have been loving during my first month of keto. So 100% my favorite meal thus far has been pizza in a mug. So basically what it is, I use one of my Starbucks mugs. I actually have one right in front of me. So I preheat my oven at 350 and then I put a layer of sauce. I put three pepperonis, then a layer of mozzarella cheese, and then I just continue to layer it. I do about like four different layers. So it comes out to about a cup of sauce, which I love the Rayo's sauce. It is the best um, pasta sauce, pizza sauce I have ever tried in my life. It's so flavorful. I love it better than the Ragu Simply, um, but I've really been enjoying that as a meal and it just gives me that like craving of pizza. And something that I found is working through keto, you can find a substitution for basically anything you're craving. So I tried out the um, keto enchiladas where you just put some uh, cheddar cheese on wax paper and then you roll your meat up with your cheese like tortilla basically and that cut the enchilada craving like that so there's so many different things you can make along the keto journey that will satisfy any craving you have right now like currently on my counter i have coffee cake and lemon pound cake all within plan all within my macros so when you're craving a sweet treat just make sure you prep it in your meal plan and then it's good to go but you have to limit yourself you can't eat the whole loaf of pound cake. That's what I've been struggling with is eating too much of the sweet treats. Too much of one thing is never a good idea. And then the next thing I, this is my ride or die favorite 100% is the Southern Keto Cookbook, you guys. This is by Natasha Newton. You can get this from Amazon. I would 100%, 10 out of 10 recommend this. And it is just a fantastic book that lays out different breakfast ideas, lunch, salads, soups, main courses, side dishes, desserts, beverages. This is the book you want. So highly recommend. So the next favorite of mine is not keto related, but it is discipline related. And it is the book called A Year of Biblical Womanhood. And this is by Rachel Held Evans. And I just loved reading this book through this first month of my keto journey because this book is 100% all about discipline because Rachel, she devoted herself to being a Proverbs 31 wife and lived a year of woman of biblical womanhood for a whole entire year. So she was doing things like wearing a head covering one month or she, um, Another another thing she did was she actually camped out of her front yard when she was on her period because that's what they did in biblical times is they camped themselves out on their um, out of their houses and then also their spouses were not able to like touch them or anything because they were meant like unclean during their period so she did that for a whole entire month she also did um, modest clothing to where she was wearing um, skirts that went all the way down to her her feet and or her ankles and I just found that this book with her discipline helped me stay disciplined too even though we were doing different things um, it was just really helpful in terms of staying on track with the discipline. So my last favorite is actually something that I treated myself to after accomplishing my first month of um, doing keto. And it is, it is not keto or diet related, it is actually beauty related. And I finally found what I need under my eyes to not have any creasing after I put um, concealer on. And it's from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Magic Eye rescue and this stuff is magic in a jar you guys it is the thickest most moisturizing eye cream under eye cream i have ever had and it photographs under the eyes beautifully so i used to get a lot of creasing like right under my eyes and using this just for a few days i see a huge difference this stuff is pricey but it comes in a big bottle and a little bit goes a long way so i wanted to treat myself um, for all of the hard work i have done thus far so now we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about fitness um, i've been on keto for about a little over 30 days now and something that i have lacked is definitely the exercise 
Um, some weeks I'll run maybe once to twice a week and that's about it. And Nicole sent me some like strength training and I gotta be honest with you guys, I did the leg workout once and it was too much for me. So I was like, oh, I'll just do running. And then the coronavirus blues set in and then it was raining and then I just made all sorts of excuses. So that is something that I've definitely lacked in this. So I wanted, I'm currently working out right now. Today's Sunday. So I'm doing a mile a day for 30 days and I just ran half mile. Now I'm walking half mile and then I'll run the rest of the mile home. So today I would have done about a mile and a half of running and half a mile walking and I'm doing this every single day. So I don't want to get myself burnt out the first day because I want to make sure that I'm able to get myself back out there and do it again. So I wanted to give you guys some suggestions in terms of working out while you're in the quarantine. So there are so many avenues on YouTube to look up videos. Even your local gym should have some sort of workout that they have posted. Um, I have a friend named Caitlin. She actually has an Instagram and she's offering free workouts daily, just using those like exercise bands. So that's something you can do. You can also do some like leg workouts, just using a chair, using your couch, um, using the stairs in your house. If you're going to go out to the grocery store, maybe park as far as you can. Um, there are a lot of ways just to get out and get your body moving because I definitely know for me, I'm going to take a little break so I can save my breath, but getting outside, getting the vitamin D, getting the fresh air, this is going to help you guys more than you think um, and just changing your scenery. So maybe start slow, maybe do 10 minutes of workout, maybe do, I don't know, 20 minutes of workout, maybe gradually add things in, um, mix up your workouts. So don't do like a whole body workout your first day because then your whole entire body is likely to be sore the very next day. And the likelihood of you doing the same workout the very next day is probably not likely because you're not going to be able to move your whole entire body. So doing a day where you're doing arms, doing a day where you're doing legs, doing a, like an ab workout, a butt workout, or just doing a walking day where you're just focusing on cardio. Something I've learned with exercise is as long as you're getting your body moving, like you could you know, turn the radio on and start dancing with your kids. Like there's no wrong way to exercise. So I want to encourage you guys from someone who has, you know, taken the in-studio kickboxing classes, someone who has, you know, at one point I was running up to four miles a day. I was training for a 10K. I was doing walking. And just what I find is the runner's high is something I crave. So I love running because it really just does give you that big boost of endorphins that your body needs to make you feel a little bit better. So if you're at all dealing with, you know, depressed feelings or maybe you're just feeling down, get your body moving and your endorphins are going to go up. So, um, you know, I'm updating you guys on my journey here on keto and I just want to let you guys know that now I'm entering a new leaf where I need to really focus on my <laughs> exercising because I haven't done a good job at that. So um, this month marks, well, today marks the first day of my month of running miles. So I'm going to run a mile every single day for 30 days. So cheers to that. So my walking is almost done. Now I'm going to have to get my butt moving and start running. So um, yeah, I just wanted to share the exercise portion of my so I just want to share with you guys where I'm at in terms of my exercise and fitness along this keto journey and just remember that Nicole is taking people on her waiting list and she did send me workouts um, she sent me videos she sent me um, guidelines of like the different exercises to do I talk with her all day long so she responds to me very quickly. <laughs> Any questions I have, she is very prompt to respond to me and she's very detailed when she um, responds to me. So she doesn't just give me like a basic response. She sends me a video note and encourages me and tells me what I need to do to get my 
body and shape. So. Talking about another problem I have. So you guys, we really need to have a heart to heart about something that is so crucial in this keto journey for me. And that is my obsession with Starbucks. Like, I don't know what it is, like why I have to have it every single day. And I have to have the same drink every single day. And I know, Nicole, I know you're over there saying, Gina, yeah, you need to cut the habit. I get a venti iced coffee every day. I was supposed to be getting a venti coffee every weekend that was supposed to be my weekend treat but ugh, i'm here to confess that it's been an everyday thing i think i did the weekend treat like one the first week but then you know shit hit the fan and there i was getting starbucks every single day so what i am doing now is i got a cold brew coffee kit from Target, but I'll link this down um, at the description box with Amazon, but I got the Starbucks cold brew kit and I have a Bodum um, cold brew pitcher. So I'll also leave this linked below too. So what you do is you add the two bags of coffee and then this is supposed to steep for 24 hours. So what I did is I actually saved my Starbucks cup. This is my Starbucks cup from earlier and I know what needs to go into it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and get the actual bottle of sugar-free um, sweetener from Starbucks and um, do like a pump at home. And then I have my heavy whipping cream that I can go ahead and add in here um, at home and then just make my iced coffee at home. And then maybe with me using my actual Starbucks cup, then maybe it'll trick me into thinking I'm actually drinking Starbucks because something needs to be done in this area of my weight loss journey. I do not wanna be dependent on something, especially something that costs like $3.95 a pop. So I've said this so many times, but I really need to cut this habit. I do. And I'm sure like my acne that pops up, I'm sure it has a lot to do with like the high content of like dairy I ingest with all the heavy cream and drink and whatnot. So <sighs> we need to get this figured out. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you guys a side by side. So on the left side, you're going to be seeing where I started. And on the right, you'll see where I'm currently at 30 days in my progress. Now the most significant change I have seen is in my stomach area. I think with me um, working out more regularly, running a mile a day for 30 days, I know that that's going to start to melt the um, lower body weight that I, 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 I carry a lot of my weight in my thighs, in my um, hips, in my bottom area. I'm very lower body heavy. So I know that with running consistently, it's just going to start melting that away. I already know that by um, trial and error already. I know running is really good with my body as well as I know that keto is really well with my body. My body just responds really well to keto. So um, I'm just really excited for the next month going into my keto journey. So I know you guys have been along with this journey with me multiple times, but you know, it's a new leaf. I've turned a new leaf, you guys. It's gonna, it's gonna stick, it's gonna stay. So again, if you guys are at all interested in um, getting on Nicole's waiting list, I will have her email linked below as well as her channel. So if you guys have any um, questions, you can go ahead and reach out to her. And a huge thank you to Nicole for taking me on as a guinea pig in her keto coaching because I couldn't do this alone. I needed some help, I needed some accountability and she has been my saving grace this past month. So Nicole, I love you so much and thank you for continuing Continue to motivate me and getting me to realize what needs to be done because this girl needs to get her shit together. So I hope you guys have a fantastic Monday with whatever it is you are doing and I will talk to you guys all later. Bye guys.